Hey everybody, welcome back to Holy Roller Guitars. Today is a long awaited video of the 72 Classic Series Thin Line in Lake Placid Blue. Remember, we're doing a giveaway at 500 subscribers, so uh, we're giving away a coffee mug and a C130 sticker. So don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. Thank you and God bless. This is a refinished guitar. If you've been following along with this guitar, I know I got it about a little bit over a month and a half ago. Now it's probably like two months uh, when the video comes out. Um, I haven't gotten around to clearing the headstock. I do want to go ahead and do that. I just wanted to clean it up some more. Uh, but I didn't want to do that until I had to change out the strings. Do that here in the next uh, month. So keep a lookout for that video. Uh, just to run down on the specs really quickly. So this is a classic series made in Mexico guitar. Starting off at the neck. This is a U-shaped neck. So it's a little bit more baseball like more rounded uh, I think and uh, still comfortable I guess from transitioning from Les Pauls to this it's very comfortable uh, you do have a 7.25 radius here this is an ash body these are 21 vintage style frets so I would say I would say they're like in the range of medium jumbo kind of frets I think I don't know how much more vintagey they were going to be. This is supposed to be a four ply pick guard. Um, I don't know if they're counting it as white, black, white, and then proloid. If that's four ply, that's what it is. And this one has aged beautifully. So I don't know if it's a if, if they changed it out, cool, um, or if it's just aged like the rest of the guitar was when I got it. There was like residue, green residue, on the fretboard, on the frets, um, the. Uh, bridge was all corroded. Y'all saw I had to switch that out, and then these pickups too. The the screws in there they're like looking brownish, um, but the pickup covers are looking very very nice. So uh, there's that, and then uh, this guitar also does have the micro tilt. So back here, uh, that is the micro tilt um, for I guess to uh, adjust the neck however it needs to go. Um, I haven't used that. I don't feel like I need to use that. Just the truss rod adjustment. And then these are the F style tuners where you put the string in there and then you can tune it up. Uh, these are not my favorite type of tuners, but they hold tune. Without further ado, this is the 72 thin line. Haven't gotten around to this. I've been wanting to do everything that I wanted to do to it before I released this video, but so be it. Uh, first off, microphones on top of me and this is how it sounds acoustically. So hopefully the microphone does catch that uh, very well and um, yeah, just it just sounds so beautiful. Uh, just acoustic, just playing it like this. It just has a very beautiful tone. So hopefully the microphone does a great job of catching that. If not, I'll try and increase the volume so you can hear it. You know, a little bend in my arm, but it's probably a good arm link till I hit the top of the microphone. Let's go ahead and get some sounds out of it uh, through the Super Reverb. And I'll show you a quick uh, slide of the pedal board and where the settings are at. So that way, when you see the name down here, uh, going across the amplifier and my knee, if my knee is in the video, um, that's the pedal I'll be running and I'll put what position I'm in and these are the original uh, Fender wide range uh, pickups so let's see what it sounds like I did call Fender and they did uh, let me know that the heights of the pickups are supposed to be 464s uh, but to play between 464s and 664s that's where customers usually like the pickup heights 
this was at uh, 364s before and the back pickup was at uh, 564s and I believe 364s so um, they lowered the base side a little bit but they hired up everything else so we'll see what it sounds like and let's get to it <laughs>
Okay, well, I hope y'all enjoyed uh, the playing. Um, this is the third time I recorded. First time, second time I didn't like the way it sounded. This time I like the way it sounds. Um, so I hope y'all enjoyed the playing. Um, I didn't play all the same stuff that I did in the first two recordings, but um, I hope that gives you the sounds that you would, you know, want to hear from this guitar. So I hope that helps. Uh, we're going to start off with the cons first and then the pros. Uh, the cons, uh, the hardware that it originally came with, uh, which was the bridge and the saddles, they were all corroded. And uh, this uh, saddle here for the high E string was all off to the side and that was causing the string to kind of hang really low to the edge of the the fingerboard and the edge of the fret and I still kind of feel that so that's just a con um, I might have to do some adjustment with the nut maybe um, or maybe that's just the combination of the seven and a quarter radius uh, but not sure um, I still kind of feel like it's kind of close but uh, I guess it'll It'll be okay. Uh, I guess that comes with any guitar. You have to get used to it. And um, since this is something completely different with a U-shaped neck and a seven and a quarter, I guess I have to just get used to this radius. So um, the second con was the tuners. When I first got it, it had 11s, and I didn't really like that. Uh, the D and the G were skipping, uh, like it wasn't tightening and it would tighten. So that was something uh, that was a con, but now it seems to be fixed with these hybrid uh, 10 and 9s Ernie Ball Slinkies. Um, the pickups, uh, I thought that the pickups were a little bit too close. Uh, I've come to figure out that I think I put them back to where they originally were, and I really like the way it sounds. This is pros now. The pickups are fantastic. This is a uh, really transitioning this guitar between a Les Paul and a Telecaster. It's kind of like the best of both worlds and then you get this 335 kind of thing with the hollow body. Um, since this is a refinished guitar, I really like the color. Um, this is the, the paint color that I would, you know, pick something that's brighter um, compared to something darker. But um, whoever refinished it did a great, fantastic job. Um, but that's not on Fender's part. This guitar was supposed to be natural. Um, ash so they, they did a great job whoever refinished it I'm not sure if because of the refinish this aged and there was corrosion or if that's just because they were nearby the water but when I first got the guitar of course it needed a lot of work it needed the headstock to be uh, all that spray paint taken off so that's why it took me a little bit longer to do this review and then of course you know the fingerboard and the frets were all corroded so I polished those up switched out the bridge and then I needed to figure out about the electronics I found out that everything's original so I'm not gonna do anything with this speed kind of knob it's kind of quicker than the tone the tone has kind of a uh, more resistance but I really like uh, the volume all the way up and then the tone just rolled back just a little bit so pros pickups new bridge uh, original electronics the this is not like a normal pick card that you would get off of Amazon like the ones behind me um, I'm pretty sure this is a legit fender one and that's why it aged like this and then of course the neck beautiful neck um, there's a little bit of figuring in the back of the neck uh, but the, another pro is that it is a 60th anniversary so this guitar is a 60th anniversary and so I really like that because I used to have a Blues DeVille that was a 410 and it was a 60th anniversary and my American Stratocaster that's a Sienna Sunburst is a 60th anniversary so 2006 these are my favorite tuners, but they do the job well, and this is something, this is the, the back of the neck, of course. And then this, I haven't had a problem with it, the three bolt on neck, and then the barrels haven't had a problem with that. Fantastic guitar, the truss rod does work. I did adjust the neck because the 11s had a lot more tension compared to these hybrid slinkies. And then um, just tried to polish up the body as best I could and clean the F-hole because it had like some residue of compound in there. But um, if you're looking to get one of these, I know that they went back to probably what they were selling for new. I think what I saw on the build sheet from Fender is they were going for $8.99 new. Um, the street price was, I think, $11.80. Um, so you get a little bit of a discount compared to what the store selling it compared to street price. Uh, I don't know, whatever the MSRP compared to the sale price that the stores are selling it for. So um, I haven't had a problem with these Vengeance style frets. I really like them. I don't think there's you know much wear to them probably just up here and the normal cowboy cords that they call these um, but further down the neck there's nothing to to be aware about 
had a, had a problem with the nut. Nut's good. I still have to clean up the truss rod a little bit. It still has some blue on it. I'm just very happy that the Fender Telecaster logo uh, thin line is still on here. But as you can see, I still need to do some cleaning for the deep gouges that are on the headstock. Um, and then I can clear it. But I think what I'm going to do is uh, clear this one first, the Squire Mini. And uh, hopefully I'll see a video on this one pretty soon. But I'll clear this headstock first. got to clean up some of these markings, these chew marks on here. I don't know what it is, but I got to clean up that one then I can uh, refinish it. And it's going to be a light amber, so it'll look kind of like the reissue ones that just came out um, for this specific guitar. How this is kind of uh, ambered over and not the fingerboard or the neck. So it's going to look very close to what's out there now. And I'll replace this knob here with the original round one um, that I like on the Telecasters. But for that being said, this is a fantastic guitar just playing on the sofa or just playing, you know, acoustically. So hopefully the microphone will catch it. It's pretty high up above my head. Fantastic guitar to play acoustically if you just wanted to play it like that. I've already had two of my friends come over and they're like, hey, I want to buy that guitar from you. Are you selling it? <laughs> no, I'm not selling it. So and I don't think I will sell it because um, I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning of the video. I saw this guitar when I first started playing uh, guitar and I was usually playing this Strat here and I wanted a Telecaster and I wanted this one. Um, but luck will have it, I had a Highway 1 Telecaster that I traded for this one, this yellow one behind me, and then that's been my number one here recently since 2020. Um, so, yeah, if you can find one, uh, good. I don't think you're going to find one in this color or the special colors, but you'll find probably the Sunburst or a natural one. And of course, Squire makes these. Now, um, the problem that I have with Squires are they're very, very light, and uh, I just didn't jive <laughs> with it because um, I did try one out in the store and it wasn't the same so um, this was a few years back this is probably like 2019 but um, I didn't really like it so I held off until I could find the one that I wanted and it took you know four years sorry the review took so long uh, to make you know this is probably coming out eight weeks after I got the guitar I just it just needed to work and uh, I had other things that I had to do and so yeah but yeah, all things considered, it's a great guitar. It's a real made in Mexico classic series guitar. That's great. So for daily advice, there was an incident that happened this past weekend. We actually went to um, Houston, we went to the NASA museum. And of course, y'all know I'm vision impaired. I didn't take my walking stick because I thought, you know, I can, I can do this. Um, but I guess life really caught up. And there was two situations where uh, somebody bumped into Sarah and I don't have my peripheral vision like I used to and I can see you know straight up and uh, she didn't tell me till after the fact but these two incidents happened at the, while we were there at the museum and I'm, we had a great time like the, the weekend was great my my sister-in-law my brother-in-law you know uh, invited us to go to the NASA museum and uh, we went to Galveston got to go on the beach and I'm going to share this picture of Of, uh, I put our names in the sand and then uh, Holy Roller Guitar and then Phoenix for uh, my wife's book that she had uh, some poetry in and then Phoenix is actually the uh, Les Paul that you see behind me. That one I call Phoenix because there's actually a hidden Phoenix in the right here. If you see it upside down you'll see some wings and then like the legs here and, it, and then the head like over here and it's I call it Phoenix because if you see it like that um, when I do the, the review and demo, I'll show the Phoenix on there. So it's just life. Life happens. I did speak to my counselor about it and, you know, she kind of said, you know, I know it's going to be hard because I'm still grieving with my vision loss, but I'm going to have to start using my white cane so people can know and people can, you know, hopefully understand. And she says there are good people out there and hopefully people will understand and they'll want to be more helpful or not be rude so it just that just happened so i guess uh what my daily advice is going to be is if you need help uh for one thing or another or if you need an assisted advice um 
please get that help and uh, start using that you know device or thing that you need to help you um, yeah it's just uh, I'm still grieving with my vision loss and this was like the one big outing that we had um, and usually if I go somewhere new I'll take my my white cane with me so I don't fall or I will know where steps are at and stuff like that uh, but this time I didn't do it I was like I oh, will be fine we're just gonna be in a museum but there was like dark rooms and there was um, a hangar that we were in that had you know a walkway but there was a lot of people and so you know you have to be careful not to bump into anybody uh, but still that happened so but with that being said I just hope that everyone can love each other and care for each other like I always say and just uh, be kind to others uh, please and especially those that or have a disability or if you see somebody with a disability uh, please be kind to them because it uh it really affected me what happened this weekend, but I'm not going to let that take away from the joy that I had this weekend and, you know, the memories that we made. So I'll put a few pictures up. Uh, this is probably like two weeks after um, this weekend had happened um, while I'm doing this video, but uh, while this video gets released, but uh, I just want to share that. Just uh, please be kind to one another. And if you see somebody with a disability, just please be kind to them. And uh, help them if you can, if, if you feel the need to to help, please ask them, hey, would you like some help with XYZ or whatever they're doing? Um, so that'll be great. So please leave uh, some kind comments down below. And I'll see you on Tech Specs on Thursday. And uh, everyone take care. Love y'all. Peace. And I hope y'all enjoyed. Sorry it took so long again. <laughs>